Our standard of living has fallen by more than 7% since the last election, a collapse unprecedented and unparalleled in, uh, in other advanced economies. Real wages for working households have collapsed by around 9%. Our consumer confidence remains entrenched at recessionary lows. McKinsey has labelled Australia as being in a productivity recession. The number of unemployed people and the number of people on job seeker caseload are increasing. And most alarmingly, youth unemployment is on the rise. We've seen over 16,000 businesses enter insolvency since June 2022, and The Economist has declared that Australia has the most persistent inflation of any advanced country in the world. Inflation remains stubborn because our policy settings are not right. Domestic inflation is running at more than five times, five times imported inflation, and the RBA governor has declared that Australia's inflation is homegrown. So, given this context of persistent inflation and a household recession, uh, the coalition, uh, and it was myself working very closely with Jane Hume and Peter Dutton, of course, uh, and the economic team, called for a budget uh, that focused on three things. First, restoring our standard of living and taming inflation by taking pressure off the prices of essentials and delivering affordable energy for families and businesses. Second, restoring a pathway to prosperity that creates opportunity for all Australians so small businesses are rewarded for their effort and young Australians have the chance to own a home. Third, restoring budget discipline and honesty, including reintroducing the Coalition's fiscal rules, which have been in place prior to this government since the 1990s. On any assessment, this budget cannot be said to have met those tests. We've now seen three Labor budgets, three chances to make the right decisions, to focus on the right priorities. Labor's only answer has been for a big spending, big government and big Australia approach. And economists from KPMG to Deloitte, HSBC, Baron Joey to private and public sector economists like Richard Holden, Stephen Hamilton, Warren Hogan and Judith Sloan are unanimous that Labor's approach is making the situation worse, not better. The result is homegrown inflation that has made Australians poorer. Now, whilst the budget delivered just over a week ago failed to substantively address these issues and meet these tests, there are some bu budget measures that we can support. In addition to the measures announced by Peter Dutton last Thursday night, including initiatives focused on dealing with domestic violence, I can confirm that we will support initiatives that we judge will make our country more prosperous and more productive. These include the establishment of a financial services regulatory grid, the proposed one-stop shop for investors, streamlined foreign investment board approvals and the development of a regulatory regime for digital assets.